Let me now show you how it looks in the Dixie parameterization software. First of all, let us take a look in the single line configuration. In the single line configuration, we can see the mirroring unit for the feeder number one. Here for example, the 4 kHz stream is connected to 7SJ85. This is for providing sampled measured values to the protect relay. The 14.4 kHz stream of the mirroring unit is connected directly to the 7K85 fault recorder. The more detailed stream is connected to the fault recorder and the 4 kW stream is between the merging units and the protection relay. Same procedure takes place for the feeder number 2. Now we will have a look at the communication settings of the 7KE85. First we click on Hardware and Protocols. We choose the communication port F. I open the Properties window and here we can see the settings which are necessary. We have the IP addresses. In communication we see that the 7KE85 acts as a process bus client. And for the network, we have also assigned the IEEE-1588 precision time protocol. In the settings chapter of the function group voltage current 3 phase number 1, we can see all the individual trigger settings. Just take a look in the voltage trigger for RMS values. RMS voltage for number 1 is switched on and everything above 480 kV primary and below 320 kV will initiate and trigger in the 7KE85. These are the internal trigger mechanism. And now let us look inside protection relay 7SJ85 for the feeder number 1. Here in the settings chapter, voltage current 3 phase number 1 over current circuit breaker. Here is the settings of the trip, which operates above 1.5 amps. Secondary will cause a trip and operate, inside the protection relay. Later on, we will see in the information matrix, that this indication will be used to start a fastened recorder in the 7KE85. In the merging unit, just above the protection relay, we click on hardware and protocol. We click inside the settings for the communication BD module. The settings are slightly different compared to the fault recorder. Also, the IP addresses are assigned and in the communication we can see that the merging unit is selected as a merging unit. Equally to the fault recorder the time synchronization is IEEE 1588 precision time. Now we take a look in the measuring point routing of the merging unit. We can see that the merging unit is connected to the physical voltage and current transformers on the rear side of the device. And in the measuring point routing in the merging unit, we can see the two of streams. Communication module on port F. When we select this one, we see in the properties window a 14.4 kHz sampling rate, which will be connected to the 7K85 fault recorder. And in the communication part E we have a second stream, which is providing a 4 kHz signal, which provides a measure data to the 7SJ85 protection relay. Finally, let's look at the system configurator, we click on sampled measures value. Let me open this one here. And when we select this data set, we can see it's connected by a 14.4 kHz. Between the feeder number 2 of the merging unit which provides the measurement to the destination 7K85 fault recorder. Now we open data set of the second feeder. We can see the 4 kHz connectivity between the feeder number 2 merging unit and the 7SJ85 protection relay. The Goose chapter in the system configurator shows us that when the feeder number 17SJ85 protection relay trips and operate, it provides an information via the Goose network to the 7K85.
In the last step, we export the project to a simulation file and import that file into the Cypertech Digital Twin where we do the testing.